And you come home and say, what's for dinner? And I say, dinner? I thought you were taking me out for dinner. And then we both laugh. Why do we laugh? Because we just do. Then I say, we're having steak and carrots and potatoes and iced tea but, and... Why do we laugh? Just because. Now, I'll be cleaning and you go out and come in.
Meredith, I am 66 years old. It is not too early to be thinking of these things. Any time is too early. I'm saving someone else. Maybe even you the trouble. I do know my own life best. Will you listen to it, please? <clears throat> Andrew G. Powers, a lifelong resident of Fieldsbury, Massachusetts, died yesterday the blank of blank. Born November 16th, 1949, Mr. Powers was a healthy baby and most always very happy. He continued this way throughout most of his life. He attended Two T's in attendance. He attended Werribee Grammar School and went to Folk River Junior High School where he played baseball and hockey. At Fieldsbury High School, he studied hard and received good grades. Almost good grades. <laughs> while being active in baseball, basketball, and drama. In 1973, he married his longtime sweetheart, Meredith Wilford, also from Fieldsbury. She bared him one son. Four. What? She bore him one son. Oh. She bore him one son. Philip, on September 12, 1976. From the time of 1972 to 2012, Mr. Powers owned and operated an appliance store. He retired in order to spend more time with his wife, whose health at the time was not good. She recovered nicely, and the two of them were very happy up until his death yesterday, the blank of blank. Funeral services will be taken care of by blank mortuary. Penny, for your thoughts, dear. Hello. Is Margaret there? Hi, Maggie. I had to call and tell you, but if I stay on this party line, the whole town will know by tomorrow. You know, blank. No, not the one we talked about yesterday. The other one. The one who wore the different colored socks today? He asked me to the... To what's coming up at school next week. You know, the blank. Since I was four or five, our mothers are really good friends. I was awfully excited, but I tried not to show it. And he was nervous and couldn't hide it. Not only that, but he had an attack of asthma right in the middle of it and had to lie down after he asked me. It was really painful. I had to pretend like I didn't know what he was talking about, so I said, dance? What dance? Oops. Well, they still don't know who it is. Anyway, I said, dance? What dance? And then he wheezed a little and said, the dance next week. And I said, no, I'm not going to it. Why do you ask? And then his asthma got worse. He might have made that part. I'm not sure. The rest of the asthma was real, though. I've seen it before, and he is not that good of an actor. And after about a minute, he said, Do you want to go with me? And then held up his hand to say, I'll talk to you later, and left. He didn't even wait for an answer. Well, of course I'm going to say yes. I like Andy. I mean, Blake. Oh, no. I guess it doesn't matter. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Maggie. Right now, I have to go tell my mother. Thanks, I'll need it. Bye. All right, I give in. That's it? You quit? I win? Yes. I'm glad. Do you understand why? Yes. I guess I just went a little crazy when I saw that black man fighting with Eddie Caldwell. I just assumed it was that man's fault. Even when I found it the truth, I mean, you defended the black man. I, well, I'm your wife. I was so humiliated, arguing with my husband in front of all those people. But you were right. It's just that ever since we were little, well, you remember there's one black man living in the town when we were young? I remember. His name was, well, I don't remember. But he was short and skinny, and he stooped over. And we weren't supposed to go too near him. Every time we saw him, you cried and cried. You were scared of him. No, I wasn't. You weren't? No. Then why did you cry? Because everyone else laughed. Don't you remember? Everyone, especially the adults, always made jokes about him. But he just smiled. And you knew it was fake. And I never knew which was worse. The jokes from his face or the ones behind his back. But that's in the past. So is this afternoon. We've been married 20 years now. I've never won an argument with you before. You've never been right before. Never? Well, maybe once. Or twice. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am.
speak to the president. Mr. Eisenhower, this is your favorite niece, Meredith Wilfer, Fieldsbury, Massachusetts. I just want to tell you that you really are doing a great job, even though you're sick. And I hope you get better soon. But still, there are some things I have to tell you. Can I come to your house on Tuesday? Good. Oh, and can I bring my friend Andrew? He doesn't live here, but he comes to play. You can send him home if you don't like him. Bye! See, I told you so. Now can we play a game? No, the president said no. Meredith, why does your nose wrinkle when you say no? Be quiet. But why? Be quiet! Let's say that whenever you say a word, I can hear you. No! That's a word. That's not fair. Don't. Stop it. You better be quiet. I can hear you. No. Be quiet. I don't want to. You better be quiet because when you say a word, I can hear you. Wait. When you don't say a word, I can hear you. No, you don't. But you said something, so now I can hear you. No, because I was just... Well, I was just saying something, so now you're not saying something, so I can hit you. No, you don't! That's not the rule, but now I can hit you because... Stop! Andrew! No, I... But she... That's... I'm sorry! No, ma'am. I wasn't letting her cheat. She was just, I think she was trying to look at my new watch to see how much time was left. Uh, time's up. Let's go. Why didn't you let me see your answers? I told you I didn't have time to study. I failed because of you. Uh, well, it wouldn't have been right. It wouldn't have been right. I would have let you see my answers if you needed to. But Meredith. Be quiet. I hate you. I had the best grade in the class, and now I'm practically failing. Well, I tried to... Right. I forgot you're perfect. You never do anything wrong. I lied for you. I told her you were trying to look at my watch. Oh, that was real quick thinking. A five-year-old could have thought of a better answer than that. Who'd want to see your ugly watch anyway? It barely even works. And for that matter, who'd want to see your answers? I should have sent near Elizabeth. At least Elizabeth gets beads. Oh, I'm sorry. About your watch, I mean. I guess I'm just jealous. It was your Christmas present, wasn't it? I thought so. It was just a few answers. I would have done it for you. Are we still going to the dance together? Yes, I don't hate you that much. My mother already bought me a dress. My mother, we were going to go out for shoes. I hope I'm not late. What time is it? <laughs> it's 10 after 3 and 12 seconds. Thanks. I need to hurry. Bye. Bye. Hating by Meredith Wilfred. Hating is when you don't like someone a lot. It is when you want them to die. But not really. I hate Elizabeth Griggs and Martha Shepard and, and Troy Martin and Andrew Powers and Robert. Yes, ma'am. But there isn't any other part except I hate Robert Caldwell and Eddie Sarton and. But I. The end. Another here. Here in the three of stillness. In the quiet after and before the cycle, the hurricane died. Here in the three of stillness, where darkness slow as a windswept remembrance of you, together, searching for night rainbows. Dear God, I have so many thoughts riding through my head right now. I don't know where to begin. Andrew had a little asthma this morning. 
It's been so many years, we didn't recognize it at first. Even so, it was far less severe than I remember it being. But as he lay on the couch with me comforting him, he looked at me and said, Darling, will you still love me when I'm old and fat and bald and senile? And I said, You're already old and fat and bald and senile. <laughs> it was a joke, Maggie. But he didn't laugh. He just lay there. Sitting here at 67 years of age, 68 next month, I have to pause and wonder what it means to be old. I recently read that from the time a human is 30 years of age, 10,000 of his brain cells die each day. I don't believe it. Science doesn't have all the answers, not yet. Why, that would mean I had lost approximately 124 million brain cells. That cannot be true. I am every bit as lucid today as I was the day I was born. Thank you for another good day. I played with Robert and his dog from after breakfast to a little before now, when it got dark. Please remember to bless Robert and his dog, Baron. And I want a dog like him too, please. And bless Meredith's swing set. And can I have one? And Eddie's sandbox. And Robert's cookie jar, that's always full. Also, I want Meredith's baby brother. But it doesn't throw up like mine does. <laughs> Make that rather as lucid today as I was the day I graduated from high school. There are advantages to being a, quote, senior citizen, unquote. No one ever tells me anything except that I look wonderful. I am quite determined that one of these days I shall dye one half of my hair bright blonde and the other half red. I'll knock out my two front teeth and dribble from one corner of my mouth. And as Andrew and I walk into the monthly country club social, the first man I bump into will kiss my hand and say, Meredith, you are as lovely as ever. And bless mother and father, and Eddie, who pushed Meredith when she called me stupid. And Eddie's mother and father, who said it was probably an accident. And bless Robert's magnifying glass. And could I have one? And bless Robert's mother's scarf with a burn hole in it where we burned it with the magnifying glass. <laughs> also, bless Meredith. I am sorry she has hurt knees. Amen. I, I tried to explain that it was a joke, but he just lay there, smiling that kind of half smile that says, Sure, it was a joke. He looked so awful that after a while I gave up trying to say I was sorry and I just talked to him. I talked about when we were children and we used to catch squirrels and try to pray them. I talked about when I was seven and I broke my arm falling out of a tree. For the next eight weeks, he wore his arm in a sling so that the children wouldn't only stare at me. I talked about anything that occurred to me. I even read him a poem I'd written. It wasn't very good. I don't think he understood it. But it didn't matter. And when I finished, he looked at me and said, Meredith, am I really old? Oldness by Meredith Wilfred. When you get old, the first thing to get old is your brain, because you start to like boys. Next, you get wrinkles on your face, like the ones you have, Mrs. Halby. <laughs> Next, your hair turns gray, and if you're really old, it falls out. But don't worry, Mrs. Halby. Your hair is only gray, not falling out. Also, your teeth fall out, and you need a cane to lean on to prove to people how old you are. I don't want to get old because of like boys and my hair turning gray. But I do want to get old so I can get married and have children. The end. I had a bad thing happen today. Oh? Sat down with our granddaughter. She looks more like you every day. And I tried to tell her a joke. And? I couldn't remember it. <laughs> couldn't remember a single one. It wanted to be a knock-knock joke like the ones we used to tell each other when we were young. Don't be ridiculous. We didn't have knock-knock jokes when we were children. Our grandchildren tell them to us. Well, that's not the point. The point is I couldn't remember a single one. Sign of age. Andrew, lately you say everything is a sign of age. You're right. Why do I do that? I fix on something and then I can't get it out of my head. It must be a sign of age. Andrew, I'm a year older than you are. I'm not worried. Just intrigued. But it's late and I'm going to bed. Don't be too much longer. You'll be tired tomorrow. I'll be in right after I finish this article.
Knock, knock. Who's there? Um, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe who? Cantaloupe. Now, sweetie, my father's got the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Tarzan. Tarzan who? Tarzan strikes forever. <laughs> I don't get it. Be quiet. Knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, I forget. Knock, knock. Who's there? Roses. Roses who? Roses are red. Knock, knock. Who's there? Roses are red and... Roses are red and who? Roses are red and violets are blue. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? The monster! The monster who? The monster with big green eyes! You dummy! <laughs> this is silly. We didn't have knock, knock jokes when I was a kid. Be quiet! Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Who? I mean... Knock, knock. Who's there? Asthma. Asthma who? As my eyes long for you, so does my heart. Knock, knock. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. Knock, knock. Who's there? Shelly. Shelly who? Shelly, each peanut before you eat it or you'll choke. <laughs> Do you get it? And knock, knock. Who's there? Olive. I love you. you. Wake up, dear. What? Wake up. I love you too. Now come to bed. That was me you were dreaming about, wasn't it, Andrew? <laughs> Thelma Taylor looks good at the bake sale today. What? Thelma. She looks sad lately, and today she looked better. Andrew? Sometimes I honestly think you do it just to annoy me. Do what? Talk about other women, especially ones you know are interested in you. She's not interested in me. You know she is. She... There's no reason to be jealous. I was just saying that I'm glad an attractive woman... She's not attractive. She's ugly. She's ugly, and she kicks dogs. What? It's true. I saw her the other day kicking a little dog that just wanted to be petted. She and Martha Shepherd make me furious. They're always flirting around, especially with you. Martha's married, for goodness sake. You know what I said when I saw her kicking that poor little ball of fur? Quick, Thelma, pass it over here. <laughs> <laughs> no. I said, Thelma, you stop that right now. That dog never did anything to you. It's about time you stop thinking you're more important than everyone else and learn to respect the rights of others. You said that? No. But I wanted to. I wanted to tell her that she better quit being such a a hussy, and that her breast sank, and that's probably why her fiance left her, and- Wait, wait a minute. Thelma has things wrong with her, but be careful not to be too mean. She's a pretty good person, even if she does hog the ball. You're right. I was unkind of her and unfair to you. You know, you teach me a lot. I am so much smarter. You still teach me things. Actually, I think it's mutual. Oh? Yeah, like that joke you made just now. I don't think you would have made that, would have been able to make that 10 years ago. Oh, I don't mean that I'm, I mean, never mind. I know you teach me things, and I know I have a lot to learn. Hey, Thelma, pass it over here. We both do. Meredith, we've known each other for what? 64, 65 years now? Yes. In all that time, if you had to pick one memory, what would it be? In all that time, I'll have to think about it a little. Why don't you go first? Oh, uh, I know I've never been happier than on our wedding day. I've been as happy, just never happier. Strange. I've never been able to remember the wedding very well. I was rather dazed, in a nice sort of way. But I remember the reception vividly. That I have tried to forget. It's my mother's knee, you mean. Yes. There you were, talking to the fellas, with your hand on my mother's knee. I thought it was you. We were both wearing white. Oh, and only 30 years difference between us. Anyone could have made the mistake. It wasn't just the mistake. It was bad enough looking over to see my husband caressing my mother's knee. But when your hand started creeping up towards her thigh... <laughs> <laughs> She never forgave me. I never forgave you. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> so, you're going to pick a memory? Oh, yes. 
The king is dead. so serious. Martha Shepherd can move one buttock independently of the other. <laughs> Hunger? You know what I mean. I know what I mean. It's 
Already? What's for dinner? Dinner? I thought you were taking me out for dinner. <laughs>